With Wolverine's mind lost to the Sea of Time, will he be able to regain himself in time to rescue Krakoa from the threat of Omega Red and Mikhail Rasputin? Well, let's hop into the pages of X Lives of Wolverine issue number 5, the grand finale of this miniseries. Alrighty then, so picking up directly from where the last issue left off, a weakened Xavier and Jean Grey come under attack by a Wolverine whose body was once again taken control of by Omega Red. As I had theorized at the end of the previous previous issue, this actually was Mikael's plan all along, stretch the two most powerful psychics of Krakoa so thin that he could come on in with his own mysterious reality-bending powers and conquer the entire island for Russia. But I know what you're thinking, if Omega Red is in Logan's body right now, where is he? Well, his mind is out there, trapped in the endless astral sea of time and space. Forced to relive some of his very worst and very best moments over and over again, I think we can all agree the classic 90s costume that we all grew up with is definitely one of the best moments. The appendices of this issue also drop references to stories we never got to see in World War II France as well as the Wild West. Were those in the digital comics that tied into this that I never read? Ultimately, things end up coming full circle for Wolverine in a way you might not be expecting. You'll remember we had seen a young Wolverine rescue a wailing ancestor of Xavier's. Well, apparently after that, the two men had remained friends for a number of years. Xavier's ancestor saw about helping to socialize Wolverine, and he even talked about trying to make him an official British citizen. Obviously, young Wolverine didn't want to do that because he was still sowing some very many wild oats. They even do a bit of a callback to the previous issue where young Wolverine talks about not wanting to swear loyalty to a flag or a patch of land. Which, you know, is funny because ha ha ha, that's actually what he ended up doing with Krakoa, isn't it? Here's the part that drove me absolutely crazy, though. Xavier's ancestor gives Logan a parting gift, a compass that is also a watch. Not just any watch, though, the watch that Wolverine had at the very beginning of this series. So, wait, did this always happen in Wolverine's timeline, or did it only end up happening because Wolverine affected his own timeline? In the last issue, they mentioned that Xavier and Jean used their psychic powers to try and wipe the memories of anyone who had been around Wolverine for the short term, but this Xavier guy was clearly with Wolverine for a long time. <clears throat> You know what, in the grander scheme of things, none of it actually matters. The watch somehow manages to be the special ingredient that Wolverine needs to get back home. And hey, isn't it wonderfully convenient that when Wolverine banished Omega Red from his body, he was able to ever so briefly look inside his mind and find out exactly where Mikhail has been hiding him. Wolverine vows a bloody vengeance for everything that he's been put through, and Omega Red swears that he only needs one more chance to go back in time and end Wolverine once and for all. Only, here's the problem though, Mikhail is getting really damn sick of Omega Red, saying that he's a loser, he's a loser, he had all the time in the world to try and kill Wolverine, and he's still lost. And you know what, I honestly can't fault his logic, Mikhail needs to move his entire operation and get out of Dodge before Wolverine and Krakoa can get here and ruin his plans. Ah yes, cause this whole Cerebro Sword time travel Terminator plot was really just the tip of a much bigger iceberg for Mikhail, his plans are much bigger bigger than one mutant, you see. Mikhail abandons Omega Red, his countrymen in the tundra, saying that it was never going to work out between them because Omega Red represents an older, weaker, forgotten Russia, and that he represents something newer, greater, and stronger. Pfft, man, you know what? Stories about evil Russians doing land grabs sure do hit differently now in 2022, don't they? Also, despite moving heaven and earth to try and steal the Cerebro sword over in the X-Force book, Omega Red is just kind of dropped off with it, which means we get the big final showdown between Wolverine and Red. And yeah, you know what, from a strictly action point of view, it's a pretty cool fight. Wolverine can heal, Omega Red doesn't die easily, so pretty much they're able to fillet each other over and over and over again. While the fight is going on, Logan gives another speech about his messed up memory and how his mind may never really truly ever be whole again, but part of living such a long life is the ability to re-experience things. It's a perfectly fine speech, but honestly not nearly as good as the one he gave in the previous issue about the butterfly effect his own behavior and violence has had throughout time. Wolverine ultimately walks away from the fight victorious, because of course he does, because Omega Red, in case you didn't know, is a loser. He's a big old loser. As his final act, before some very much needed R&R, Logan decides to return the stolen Cerebro sword to Sage, only he can't rest just yet, because the island already needs him again. You see, they're under attack. But not just by any regular 
regular old threat. Oh, no, no. Krakoa has come under attack by a phalanx wolverine from the future. Want to know more about that? Be sure to read X Deaths of Wolverine. And so that was X Lives of Wolverine issue number five, the big finale to this part of this big two-part Wolverine event series. And ultimately, I thought it was fine. It's certainly not joining the upper echelons of mutant-based time travel stories. But it's also certainly not the worst Wolverine story I've ever read either, so you gotta give it credit there. The biggest problem with this one is that it just kinda seemed a little intellectually empty, didn't it? It was Wolverine telling a big rambly old man story about his life, and honestly, we walk away with him not really seeming that different. Oh, sure, he now says that he loves Krakoa, where before he was a little suspicious of it, but a lot of that doesn't actually happen in the story. It's just kind of something he tells us in his internal monologue. I was also hoping for a much bigger conclusion to the Mikhail Russian story, as it was basically the biggest, most all-encompassing story that Percy had been telling in his X-Force book and in the Wolverine book, but it's really not so much a chapter close as a to-be-continued. Which I guess makes sense, because unlike a lot of the other X-Men books that are swapping around their creative teams, Percy will actually be staying on with Wolverine and X-Force. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 6.5 out of 10. Not the best, not the worst either. Perfectly serviceable Wolverine story. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.